Hello, everybody, and welcome along to what is the second round of the 2023-2024 uh, Hankook Middle East Trophy. It's the Hankook Six Hours of Abu Dhabi. We're at the Yas Marina Circuit on the full, uh, on the full Grand Prix track, uh, 3.281 miles, 5.281 kilometres, and... This, after a little bit of jiggery and, if you will, porkery, is the revised look at the Middle East uh, Trophy for the Hankook 24-hour series. Mm. And we'll finish it off next weekend for the traditional start to the 2024 season normally uh, with the 24 hours of Dubai. And we'll have that for you in sound and vision despite the date change. Uh, Kravetnik and the circuits working very hard together along with the transportation companies to get round. You know, when people say circumstances beyond our control and you kind of raise an eyebrow and go, hmm, really? Well, um, I, I think military action is something that you really can't be uh, have a finger pointed at you about. And not just the motor racing, of course, that has been affected by what's been going on uh, with uh, world events and a great work by everybody concerned, not least, as I say, Creventic and the circuits to find time in what is a congested time of the year for motor racing out here among the major circuits. There's very few uh, dates that are free uh, for motor racing around here at this time of the year. Uh, well, it's John Hindoff and Phil Anson in the booth. We've gone green for the per first part of qualifying. We'll bring Nick Damon in in a moment. Let me tell you what's going on. This is going to be incredibly frustrating for all the drivers because all of the cars are out at the same time. It is usually uh, a split, or it has been in the past, a split qualifying. Uh, we haven't got the time to do that here this weekend because it is such a packed programme with four of the series taking track time here at Yaz Marina Circuit. So it is three 15-minute sessions and each driver has to... Uh, each car, rather, has to slap on a set of handcooks, fill it up with racing fuel, and then you can't touch the tyres or the fuel load for those three sessions. Three different drivers go out, set a fast time, and then the average of those three drivers is what is your grid position. Uh, and Phil, we've seen this in the past where clearly tactically, that means that you've got to have people who can uh, you've got to have people who can look after the tyres but still be quick early on because your last driver's got to have some performance left from the anchors. You see that too, John, and uh, it's, it's really going to be a big issue for some of them because in this, in this session, we can, uh, if you have an AM driver in your team, you must use your AM driver in this session. And they are the ones that could have tyre issues with locking the front tyres up. They're going out on a cold set of hand uh, They've got to get some temperature in the tyres, as we can see the Porsche weaving away down the, down the straight there as well. The other thing they've got to watch out for, John, is that track limits is going to be very heavily uh, monitored. 
uh, track limits is going to be very he heav heavily monitored. And the track limits at turn 16, you, if you do track limits there, you'll lose that lap and, and the, the next. next. And that is when you've only got 15 minutes in a 154 lap for the quick cars, you are really going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, let's go down to pit uh, lane. The cars are on the circuit. The first 15-minute session is running as we speak. Uh, Nick Damon is enjoying the evening sunshine. Ah, hello, John. Hello, everyone out there in the wonderful world of watching land. Um, it is a marvellous day here in Abu Dhabi. For those of you back in Europe, I just want to tell you, we did peak out at about 25 degrees. Now coming down a little bit, we've got a little bit of a breeze blowing down the main straight, making them faster into turn one, a bit slower on the back straight. And we have a packed, packed pit lane. Now, something you need to talk to Joe about, Joe, qualifying packed pit lane. Yeah, you, we, we'll be patrolling it. We haven't got far to walk, have we? I'm a big fan of this format of qualifying. The AM drivers are out at the moment, three drivers across the three sessions, and it's every driver gets a chance to contribute to the session. When we see the car start on the grid tomorrow, all of the drivers in the team, or at least three of them, have had a part to play in where that car is. Now then, it's our job in the pit lane, Nick, to stay safe primarily. It's going to be a bit tricky this weekend because for you back at home, I just want to tell you, there's three cars per garage this weekend. We've kind of crammed them in there, and that's going to be a very busy, busy pit lane for the likes of Court 60s and such. Now, just while we're talking about cars in the garage, we look above the garage next to us, one of our well-known teams, Haas RT, the team out of Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, interesting, they've bought themselves not only the well-known and race-winning Audi, uh, with Matthew Dutre and team, but they've got a new car entirely, a black Mercedes. Yeah, this is a car that's come from China. The team were telling us earlier that they've just had, they've put the Haas standard of prep on the car. There's a few niggly little teething problems that they're really still getting down to. And it's it's obviously one of those, and I quote, teething problems that has caused the car for this delay to its qualifying. Well, let's hope they get out. Track hotting up, temperature cooling down, with the laps is being set. Thank you, Nick. That's Nick Dermott down in the pit uh, lane. Nick to pit. So the... Eight minutes, 33 seconds to go. Car Collection Motorsport with Dustin... Dustin Blattner is the fastest at the moment with a last lap time of 155.7. Carl Kavers with the thank you um, with seconds best time at the moment 156.6 and Manamari Energy by EB Motors Sabina De Castro in third as I say that Phil Barron goes to the top in the Ferrari 488 of Barron Motorsport welcome back to them it's the number 86 car uh, that is uh, now in second place these times at the moment, uh, obviously, uh, are great for the drivers that are out there, but they must not take too much out of these Hankook tyres, these early laps. The Hankook tyres uh, are very, very durable and give really good longevity, but you have to be careful how you bring them in, Phil. And that is a real skill, particularly as you've got to put uh, your least, one of your least experienced drivers out first, when the car's at its heaviest, of course, because it's got the most fuel in. You can't add any more fuel before the end of this session. Indeed, and uh, a lot of these guys would not have driven on the, the new compound of tyre, the C54H, which we bought in in Kuwait in December. And uh, that's for GT3, GTX and 992. They can still run on the old C52, but we were talking to CP Racing um, uh, regarding that. We are talking to Joe Lewis at CP Racing. He said he really liked these new tyres. He said that the... the, the much they were able to hang on to a, a, a much more respectable lap time for longer um, but well, as they did they won the race uh, but uh, they were very very happy with what Hancock had done with the evolution of endurance tires so uh, yeah some of these guys have been using for the last two days we've had private practice sessions here so people getting some laps around the circuit because a lot of the guys have um, you know the grid of 44 cars John it's the biggest grid we've ever had at a six-hour race it's you know um, so uh, this is uh, gaining some precedence and uh, uh, we're going to see a lot of these drivers also next weekend in the 19th running of the Hancock 24 hours of Dubai that stays on top at the moment 
in the 86 car running in the GT Am category. And uh, that's Philip Barron at the wheel sharing that with Ernst Kirschmeyer. I talked to him the a couple of years ago when he uh, put that uh, Ferrari on pole. And a uh, local driver here, one of the instructors at the Yasmarana circuit, Axel Jeffries, will be sharing that with as well. We have some cars that only have two drivers this weekend. Uh, but, so uh, one of those drivers is allowed to do two of the sessions. They don't have to sit a session out. Uh, it's just all about fairness. Um, it is only a six hour race. Century Motorsport in the 22 up in to a second position. And uh, running in the GD3 Pro Am car class this weekend. Watching the 86 car, and uh, that is resplendent in uh, Ferrari red, I would call that. We have around about five and a half or four and a half minutes to go at this time. And we've already seen some cars come into the box because, as John said earlier, you have to fuel to get to the end. Uh, you have to fuel to get to your uh, Q3. And if you get yellow flags or if we get a code 60 and you spoil your quick lap, you won't have enough. If they've done it a t on tight fuel, they won't have a l enough um, fuel to do another run. And we yeah. saw that happen last year at the 24 hours at Dubai. That record pace around here is for GT3. Um, Thomas Engel set that back at the end of last year uh, with the AMG. Different tyre manufacturer there, but that's a 151.2. GT4, Cam, uh, Khaled Al Mahadi in, going back to 2022 in the uh, one of the Porsche challenges the porsche sports car challenge in a cayman gt4 that's a two or three four six one tcr uh, alex anivas yes local local driver here won the in series a cupra. yeah, yeah. In a, uh, had the series one cupra mm. and he's very excited about uh, the news about tcr and the season uh, the uh, series one car that james k um, is promoting and, and getting more series one cars back into the series uh, mainly in europe so uh, uh that is sitting out there he's just waiting that's a two or six three for that car and uh, uh, that was done on a different configuration Oh, was it? Yes. So that isn't a no, Grand that Prix is, set? No, okay. that would have been done on probably the North Corkscrew circuit because when that car ran, we had the 21 corners. Ah. Then we uh, Vortex 2.0, the lightest car on the circuit this weekend, 1,000 kilos minimum weight in that carbon fibre. Beautiful uh, car this weekend. Now, am I right in saying that that's changed, um, that they've continued to develop that car, Phil, since we last saw it at... Uh, at Kuwait Motor Town. Oh, well, I don't know if they've developed it more. I was comparing it to the um, the uh, the one series, the, uh, the Vortex 1.0, which was 1,100 kilos and less power. But Nick said in Midweek Motorsport uh, this week that that car is rapid in the front line, currently leading the GGX category in uh, the Middle East Trophy. And uh, there we have a car that we don't see very often. And uh, here for the six hour this weekend, the 223. <sighs> what a the Lamar. It's a, a gorgeous looking piece of kit and uh, that is running in the TCX TCX category and uh, along with the Vortex and the uh, KTM. Considering the issues that have surrounded getting the cars here, uh, a, a surprisingly a few withdrawals. In fact, actually, I think we've got a couple of extra, uh, extra entries yes. here. It has affected the. Uh, it has affected slightly the entry for the Dubai 24 Hours. Yep. Um, the provisional list. Oh, you never can take that as red. In fairness, I think we're about uh, just over a dozen down on that. Yeah. But still, I think we're still going to have over. Certainly over 50 and possibly over 60 cars next weekend. Still some cars to arrive, plus 
uh, there are one or two people from here who have said, well, do you know what, we'll stay Why on now. Yeah, they were coming to do this race and this race only as the third race yes, of the championship. Of uh, it may affect uh, talk two teams of drivers up and down the uh, pit lane about how people will attack this race. Yeah. What you don't want to do is break the car up before the 24-hour race. Exactly. So uh, it, it's an interesting one. Yeah, uh, a lot of work going on to get the grids up to, uh, but we can't control world events. But uh, as you said before, congratulations to uh, Gary and all the team at Creventic and all of the teams as well. Oh, you know, brilliant. We, we've lost some uh, drivers, obviously, to the 24 hours of Daytona on, on at the same weekend. We've got a yellow flag at Turn 9 at the moment. That was only momentary. It's gone away. Uh, but, but, yeah, uh, but it's brilliant. We've lost some drivers. We've gained some drivers as well. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, we're going to have uh, some good fun. There's the Ginetta um, out on a track. Uh, at RSL underscore studio, of course. Um, if you um, want to get in touch with us, at RSL underscore studio. Checkered flag looks like it is out for this session. We've got a five-minute break in between sessions to change the driver. No tyre changes. The tyres are actually not allowed to be removed from the car. No, indeed. Okay, so, um, and uh, they're very strict on that. Uh, but no fuel. The fuel station is closed. Now, the fuel station here at the uh, six hour is before the pit lane. Ah. Okay, they go out and uh, go behind the medical centre to the helipads. And uh, that is where they've got um, the Hancock, and, uh, sorry, Creventic have bought their six Bowsers down here. They, the special ones that they had built. Um, uh, they're here this uh, weekend. And uh, that's where fueling will happen during uh, the race tomorrow. Let's go down to Nick Dearman, who has got the fastest driver in this first session, 154 point, uh, 153.8, and that's Phil Barron. Uh, Phil, that was a uh, pretty impressive first run. It was just, it was it, it was like, just you get a clean run, or was there still traffic issues? Uh, the first lap was pretty clean, I have to say. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the lap. I was expecting to do a little bit better, but that's always the case mostly. So I take it as it is. I hope I keep the first place to the end and uh, give the car to my teammates. How much do you bear in mind when you're driving around that you're the first person of three to be going out on these tyres? you take it a little bit easy or you actually go as fast as possible? I think every race driver is pretty egoistic, so I just enjoy myself and, and you know, take everything I get. One of, the, one of the few Ferraris here. Do you think the Ferrari suits the Abu Dhabi circuit? Uh, definitely, definitely. Uh, we've been uh, doing a few races here already, and it was always like a good performance with the car. It's always drive to, uh, nice to drive a Ferrari, I have to say, and uh, I'm proud to be the only one here on the grid, and I hope we keep up with the others. Great stuff. Well done. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Yeah. It's uh, Phil Barron, and that is the end of the qualifying uh, for the first set of drivers. Now, all those times that we've seen, yes, they are important, but they're not important right here, right now. <laughs> and this is why three sessions yeah. of 15 minutes for each of the categories. They're all out there together here. That isn't always the case. Every session, if your team has got uh, three drivers or more in, you must have a different driver in each session. You can't change within the 15 minutes, only at the end of the 15 minutes. The, the session that we've just had, the first quarter of an hour, is the has to be an AM driver, because all the classes here, you have to have a non-pro driver in it. Uh, no refueling at all, either during uh, or in between the 15-minute sessions. And same with tyres. The four handcooks that you start on are the four handcooks that you finish with 45 minutes of running later. Again, this is all about endurance. Hashtag this is endurance, Phil. I like this because it means three drivers contribute to the starting position of the car. And the engineers contribute because you've got to get just the right amount of fuel in and not be hauling around 20 or 30 kilos too much and there's an element of tyre strategy in there as well most definitely it, it, um, it really puts the onus on three drivers 
and uh, you know it, it um, everybody has to play a part it's not just putting one quick guy in there getting up there and then going backwards during the race this actually shows where the car is in performance and driver uh, skill level for where they end up on the grid and so if they move forward from that people are improving okay you can you have a real measure of where they are at and i think that uh, for th for this type of thing it is really really important because people want to grow from the am into the pro-am and be the pro uh, Nick Damon in between these sessions uh, with an opportunity to have a chat with whom, Nick? Evo Bloikers, who's not just chatting to us because he's the dad, but the man who was fastest in 992 in that car. Where, so where'd that speed come from, Evo? I, I don't know. I don't know. I was surprised myself. The car was wonderful, new tyres, the track was good, and I felt good myself. I had a clear track, which is difficult. Uh, we uh, decided to go out very, uh, very first, uh, as first. And uh, yeah, the, the car felt, just felt great. And um, I was happy with my lap time, but I was more happy than they told me uh, I was fastest. Now the team this weekend for the six hours, it's you, it's Luke, and it's Fabian, but you've, 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 sacked, you've sacked your star. Where's Rick? Where's, where's Rick Broikers? Um, Rick is at home. Uh, he had some other obligations also regarding racing. Um, that was canceled, but he also bought a new house. So he's, pa he's painting now. Uh, probably he's watching now television, I hope. He's going, oh, don't, oh, well, well, they're coming back if you go this quick. Um, I understand you've got, uh, the team's got a busy night ahead of them, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, our engine uh, uses a little bit too much fuel. Uh, probably we need to, to change it for Dubai uh, anyway, so we decided to change the engine tonight. Um, then we are fine for the race and we don't uh, have some days off just before Dubai. Great stuff, thanks. Thank you. Well, a little <laughs> bit extra work then for the uh, John's Red Camels overnight uh the it's a it's been a fairly relaxed day for the 24 hankook 24 hour runners at least uh, because of everything else that uh, was uh, going on uh, reset the clock put another 15 minutes on uh, and by the way the guys at red camel have brought paul trustwell out to this one their strategy guru uh talking to paul early on and uh, he did the Kuwait Motor Town remotely, um, but uh, they decided that for a little bit longer race, then it was a, a good idea to bring him out. And they spent the warm-up this morning, or the free practice session this morning, working out exactly how much to the litre petrol yep. they needed to put in that car before. And, and that's what we're talking about here, small margins, Phil. It is in, incredibly small margins. And given that that uh, Red Ant team have some very, very quality drivers, they can all they can all match within a tenth of, tenth of a second of each other. So um, it, it just makes common sense that they want to carry the minimum load that they need to um, in that car because it, it uh, you know, it, it's, it's all about a six hour race is more important qualifying. Sim Racing Bar Stewards tweeted in at RSL underscore studio. With Abu Dhabi and Dubai having so much runoff and the track effectively being in a sea of tarmac, how big of an issue will track limits be here? And at Dubai, uh, driving Dubai uh, on the console game, staying in the lines and getting and uh, not getting too carried away is a challenge. It's a fair point. Yes. Uh, safety, of course, is one thing, but taking an advantage is another. I've been talking to... Uh, race control and by the way Eduardo Freitas is here um, doing uh, some of the officiating for some of the other series here this weekend but talking to race control it's the usual thing here we have a, a standard set of race officials who travel with the Creventic the Hancock Creventic series and you get warnings warnings uh, in uh, in the race will translate to uh, having uh, a stop go penalty in qualifying you're going to lose laps but there are very very clearly defined rules and regulations and particular places that are being looked at Phil. indeed there are so basically we're going to get a pop-up on the screen every third offense you'll get a warning uh, after each now, this is driver specific not car specific uh, yeah, drivers, well, it may be car specific because you may get it 
come into the pits on the next lap, the penalty will still have to be served by the next driver. Oh, yes, but uh, I mean, the third offence by a single drive. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So uh, they do that 10 seconds time penalty is the norm for the uh, track limits. Turn one, turn three and turn 16 are particular getting looked at this weekend at the drivers uh, team managers meeting they even put photos up of what is acceptable and what right. is not no i have um, no problem with that neither do i because um on some places it's the white line like it is um, on the majority of the circuit and some places you can run over the curb so they're doing that um but, and there also is the risk if you continually uh, abuse it a drive-through penalty and uh, that one that one would hurt um, getting a drive-through penalty and don't forget there are some different regulations about taking stop and hold penalties now uh, because you can't now do those during code 60. No. so code 60 is no penalties can be taken if you have started your penalty and click the watch over and it turns uh, code 60 you do the penalty if you haven't and you're coming in to do a service during a code 60 and you were supposed to do your two-hour limit is coming up that two-hour limit gets ch gets changed to, to something co to completely different the next time you enter the pits. So yeah. it goes from two hours to the next time you enter the yeah. pits, you must serve that penalty. Joe it's Bradley, sorry, uh, sorry, Phil. Uh, Joe Bradley has taken it over in the pit lane. He's at uh, the number 92 AMG uh, with Alexander Tonale. Yeah, we saw the 92 Mercedes not coming out for qualifying. A problem with the car. Alessandro Tonali is here. And Alessandro, you managed to get one lap in only there. Yeah, we had an issue with the battery just before the start. So the guys replaced the battery in the last minute. So, yeah, I did only one lap. At the end, uh, I'm quite happy because uh, we had a lot of issue with the setup during the last days. But now it's looking that the car is much better. So I'm quite confident that uh, my colleagues can do a good job now for the quality and much better for tomorrow. I suppose you did not use the tyres at all, so the tyres will be good for them. Say again, sorry. The tyres will be in good shape. You didn't use them. Ah, 100%. I did only one lap. So, <laughs> yeah, my Eduardo will find for sure a good tyres. The team have only just taken the car, I believe. They haven't had the car long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did some adjustment with the, with the car, with the setup. Because it was very far yesterday, also this morning, so we completely changed the setup to the car, and uh, hopefully it will be much better. Thank you, Alexander. It's Joe Bradley down in the pit lane. Um, good news, bad news. Sorry, bad news is you'll start at the back, but it's a six-hour race. Good news is uh, you've got a better set of tyres for that start. <laughs> yes, I suppose is how you uh, how you look at it. Let's uh, have a look at who's leading the way. Dennis Marshall in uh, the 96 car, uh, that is the Car Collection Motorsport, uh, but the, running in the GT3 Pro-Am, the Porsche 911 GT3 R, um, sharing that with Dustin, uh, Dustin Blatter and uh, um, uh, Loic Hartog. Uh, currently leading that. The 22 is currently in second position as we count through Century Motorsport. Lewis Plato at the wheel of that car at the moment, uh, the BMW M4 GT3. And uh, currently in third position, Ernst Kirschmeier in uh, uh, car number 86, which is the Ferrari. So average times begin to take yes. uh, a little bit, uh, but make a little bit more difference now. So that 153.7 for Dennis Marshall in the car collection motorsport Porsche. And we've got a red flag. Oh, yes. And a red not... flag for a spinning Porsche Cup car, the 965, coming out of the final corner. And it's the old drop the left hand handcuffs off the circuit and spin to the right. Now, was there a touch on the right hand side wall there for that Cup car? And I'm not sure that it was pulled up in time for that number 965, which is the MDM Erechna Tom Coronel behind the wheel of that car. So he's got it going again. I don't think there's damage on the front of that car, if I'm honest. I think he uh, may have got away with that. Looping it around out of turn 16 is pretty, si pretty similar. Remember, we saw that a few years ago with one of the local teams who backed it into the wall and uh, did the gearbox. 
Now, there will be some of you watching and listening around the world that will say, OK, why have we stopped that? Because he's got back going again. The answer is, turn 16 here is blind. Yep. You commit to that, and that in GT cars, in fact, in any car, but particularly in these GT cars, that's a quick corner yeah. onto the start-finish line. You set the car up, you nail the inside kerb, and then you are drifting out to the left-hand side. Now, if one car's done it, another car could do it. You could have a car that's maybe broken, and it rolls back into the middle of the road or onto the racing line. An absolutely right thing to do for race control. Double wave yellows uh, at the area of the incident and a red flag to slow people down as quickly as possible. But this has just made the team managers wince. Yeah. Because we had about 20 cars on hot laps. Yeah. And that has done their fuel. Yeah. That's just, it just really, really, uh, but this is what causes the issues. Ke can I do an out lap, a hot lap again, and give the third driver enough time to get his lap done? Because this was not planned in our thing. Let's uh, go straight down to Joe Bradley. Uh, Was this little break in proceedings? It won't take long. The, the clock, by the way, stopped at eight minutes and twelve. He's down at the 85 AMG pit uh, with the guys from CP Racing, fresh from their uh, fabulous run at Kuwait Motor Town. They lead the championship, Joe. And that's exactly where I want to go, John, where we've got this red flag. Just halting qualifying here. I want to go back to Kuwait, the first round of the Middle East Championship. And Charles Espinlove, Charles, you were the driver at that very intense final 30 minutes. I mean, 11 and a half hours of qualifying and a 30-minute sprint. That was, from my point of view, as a fan, that was a phenomenal race. And Heindorf's race of the year. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. When you came in and asked, let's talk about Kuwait, you can see the smile on my face. <laughs> yeah. Brings back all the emotions again. Obviously racing with my CP Racing family here. Um, yeah, that was very intense, awesome uh, racing. You know, all my, my friends and family back home were like, they were cheering, crying, like, oh my God, it's that. And then going back and watching the broadcast, you know, all those emotions again. Awesome, awesome race. Um, you know, can't thank CP Racing enough. Can't thank you guys enough for the coverage and, and endurance racing with 24-hour series is amazing. Well, you made our job uh, quite easy, Charles, with that entertainment. But you know what? We, we tend to take for granted the human element and the human side of that. We had two drivers, uh, yourself and, and Sergio Nikolai, who was trying everything he knew to get by you. But you know what? You still had to keep your focus. You still had to keep your concentration. You still had to hit your breaking points. I mean, just how hard is that? I mean, I know you're an experienced driver, but it's still hard. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, you, you, you get as veterans, as Charlie doesn't like me to say the old guys anymore. <laughs> when you're veterans like us, yeah, it, uh, you know, it was pretty intense. We had some strategies, good calls from Michael, and it came down to that last 30 minutes. Like you said, we had to save a little fuel, and then when he got, and then it was like, let's go. And, um, you know, he was stronger than me in some areas. I was stronger than him in some areas. And, it, you know, I got to the point, I'm like, okay, we can do this. Let's win this thing for, the, for, for us. And, uh, is that, is that the key to it, though? Is that the key to finding out where your opponent, like you're duking it out with, where he's weak, where he's strong, and, and, and henceforth you defend and attack in appropriate places? Yeah, absolutely. So I always say, you know, I love endurance racing because it's a high-speed chess game, right? Yeah. Again, it goes back to the strategy. But in the car, you see where his, his strengths are, his weaknesses. Obviously, we saw him run all weekend. Phenomenal job by them. First time in the, in the new 992. Uh, GT3 car stepping up from a cup car. They did a fantastic job. They're going to be a, a contender in GT3 forever. Um, but yeah, again, it's it's you know again being a veteran, age, experience. I've screwed up so many times, but you know you learn. Even even old guys can learn. And uh, yeah, you, you you take your strengths and your weaknesses, and you know where you can attack, where you can't, where you got to defend, where you can't defend, and and you know you move forward, and it worked out in half a second. Super exciting. Didn't have a heart rate monitor on you, did you? I absolutely did. I it's, thought you did. I it was it was pretty impressive. You can see, you know, my max heart rate. It dipped through in a code 60 and came right back up. And it was, I don't want to give the number because I was going to ask you the number, of course. It was about 168 the entire time, and for a guy my age, that's pretty good. Um, but you know, it, obviously full of emotions. We got out. It was an intense battle with Sergey, and and uh, I told the guys, I said, man, at my age, I don't know how many more of those I got, but yeah. man, it was neat to be able to do it. Brilliant. Thanks, Charles. Thanks for taking us back. Bradley with uh, Charles Esplanade. Brilliant stuff. Uh, um, 168. Uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's very, very good. I um, said the booth was higher than that, John. <laughs> I think 
I think mine, uh, <laughs> my, that's right about my resting heart rate. Actually, I'm only kidding. Uh, we've got a problem Ooh. for the Porsche, uh, the number 715. Uh, this that's uh, P21 Motorsport. That is one of the 991 Gen cars. Uh, we haven't seen 991s for a little while. We have, have we? three here this weekend. Yeah. Good both to see them back. Both, both of the P21 Motorsport, they get the biggest advantage this weekend. They can take 100% fuel under code oh, 60. Can they? Yeah, the two, two of them. There's a 991 running in the GT3 category, which can't do that because it's for GTX cars only. Only, oh, right. right. Very so good. Uh, both of those, they're, they're teammate cars. Um, uh, so yeah, the P21 Motorsport, 715 and 721. Th there are some, it's got a little flappy bonnet at the yes. moment on the left-hand side, that, that's that, a, uh, that that's machine. A it's default, a technical term. Default yeah. setting for Porsche. Yeah. <laughs> there are people, and I'm, I'm not sure, I, I could be persuaded, 991.2 may be peak 911. Um, and that comes from a 992. Owner, <laughs> but I, 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 991.2 is such a such a good looking car. The Cup car in particular, uh, I think, worked that body shell very yes. very well indeed. Down to just under five minutes to go. We started with 8.12, uh, and it, we went green. And interestingly, I, I expected when Joel was finishing off with Charles Esplanade up to hear a, a slew of engines, a cacophony of cylinders firing up, and they didn't. And um, which I'm sort of surprised at, if I'm. I'm well, honest, I took think, them a couple of minutes to get out, Phil. I think they were waiting to see what everybody else was Did. doing because yeah. it just happened at that place where we had probably half the field going yeah. um, going for the quick lap. Can't touch the car, of course. So no. No, no adjustments to be made. Uh, Brent Grove is out there at the moment for Grove Racing. Now, I've got the swear jar here <laughs> for how many times I say Grove Racing and a different manufacturer. They are quickest. No, they've just dropped down a second at the moment, on average, uh, for their AMG. I associate them <laughs> with a, a, different, uh, a different manufacturer uh, in their racing, having watched them at Bathurst and uh, a number of other places uh, around the world. Good GT4 entry here this yes. weekend. Century Motorsport, Charlie Robinson and the M4 GT4 G82. They've just gone ahead on average because Charlie's put in a 2 or 3 one 4-0, Brenton um, in the GT4 uh, with the second quickest time in this session, although it's GPM by Dragon Racing in another AMG who have the second best average Continental Racing, Vasily Vladikin for the first of two Gazoo Racing Toyota Super GT4 Evos and the Gazoo Racing UK car, Ben Tusting behind the wheel of that car, the number 423 uh, in fourth place in the class. Coming towards the end now, last three minutes of session two of three. We'll start, listen, you say, come on guys, you, you, why are you not talking about all these times changing, etc., etc.? Um, oh, actually, Brenton Grove is, uh, is in the GT3 class rather than the GT4, excuse me, um, with that car, that's the number 10 car. Uh, with that uh, time that he's just put in. So they're in fourth position at the moment. Why am I talking about times? Because it will only start to shake out in the closing minutes of the next 15 minutes. We've got two drivers down, one driver to go to set the grid for the Hankook Abu Dhabi six hours tomorrow. It's getting darker, John. It is. It is getting darker. The lights are going to come in and start to play an effect. You can see the lights there on the Supra as uh, it makes its way around. How if many of the external lights are we going to have on? Because often when we race sports cars at somewhere like Bahrain, we don't put all the full Formula One lights. There's a various settings on these lights about how, how much you can use. Well, we've only got 15 minutes to go. We are past sunset just now. So I dare say, um, I believe these only have an on and off switch. <laughs> to be really perfectly okay. honest, when they, when I was here last weekend when they were turning them all off, and uh, they just went off. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, it was like the sun going down here as an on-off switch. W were you actually at your car at that, or did at that point did you have to just stop walking and get your torch out? I had to get my torch yeah. out because I was halfway through the paddock and it all went dark on me in the support pits. Very good. All right, so down to the last 90 seconds, laps to time. Colin White racing in the black. Uh, Janetta, the CWS car, sitting in behind the Lamera. That uh, very pretty. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Two, two, three. It's got kind of a look of a, uh, a racing Puma, a little bit of a TT kind of look. Very low slung, 
two-door coupe styling, and you've got the CWS, one of two CWS Janettas, 278, 279 with us this weekend in the gloss black. Now, these are the V6 yes. cars uh, with the three and a half litre Ford sourced engine. The, the actually no rear lights on that car at the moment, actually, no lights on at all on uh, the uh, second of the two cars heading down the back straight at the moment. The G56 Evo, which was white the last time we saw it, uh, is a development car that's got well, it, it's. <laughs> I talked to Lawrence Tomlinson about this at length, the man behind uh, Ginetta, and yes, it starts life as a Ford V8 block, but basically that's all that's left of it. Everything else is uh, uh, en designed, engineered, and manufactured either by Ginetta or to Ginetta's exacting standards. So we're talking pistons, con rods, crank, etc., and the top of the engine. So he feels that it's only fair to call it a Ginetta V8. Yep. And doesn't it sound gorgeous? It looks great as well. The Vreeley... <laughs> oh, the the Vreeley... Uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, they've refined the shape yeah. of a... You can still see it's a Ginetta. But it's just a stunning piece of kit. As the clock ticks over zero to finish a Q2 five-minute break coming your way before the all-important Q3. Here's how this done then in GT3 car collection uh, has the uh, best average time of a 154.6, 154.7 for Haas RT. Tom Kiefer last in that car. That's the Audi. Audi customer racing with a presence here with a big truck right on the entrance to the back of the paddock here. Then a 154.8 average for the M4 of Century Motorsport, the number 22, Lewis Plato. Then Ernst Kirschmeyer has been behind the wheel of the number 86, Baron Motorsport. They were going very well in the first session. 155.1 is their average right now. There goes Ernst across the line. And Grove Racing's Brenton Grove uh, is just pushed down, actually, because Ralph Bourne brings the Porsche of Herbeth Motorsport, the number 91 car, into a 155-0, so it gets inside the top four. Uh, that pushes uh, Brenton Grove down to sixth. Then Manamari Energy in seventh, that's the EB Motors multicolored number 95 car. Race Labs McLaren uh, in nine, eighth position, rather. Ninth Huber Motorsports Porsche and an AMG for CP Racing in 10th position. In GTX, the Vortex, Lionel Amarouche was last in that car. Their 13th overall underneath the GTX category from Scott Sports Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo, the 750 car in 16th overall. Uh, Michael Mack brought that car in the pit lane a moment or two ago. Razoon more than racing with the KTM Crossbow, another one of the, uh, I was gonna say oddities, not so much now. We're, we're much more used to seeing uh, the KTM, Daniel Drexel has gone across the line in the 714, he's third in GTX, in what will undoubtedly be one of the most highly competitive classes in the six hours tomorrow, we'll have it all for you live and free of course, uh, on Radio Show Limited via the page you're watching on now, YouTube, also the series website as well, K Kramer Racing uh, with their Porsche uh, 992 leads, that's the 936 from the 909 Red Camel Jordan, Fabian Dance has just done his stint and in third, it's MDN Erek Onu, Erek Onu, excuse me, Tom Coronel, who had that little spin earlier on. And because this is such a big class, I'll do the top six here. QMMF by HRT, local team. Abdullah Ali Al uh, Khalifi uh, was the last driver in that car. Salam uh, Al Kabiti in the Rabdan by Fulgenzi in fifth, and Keg Kramer Racing's uh, 937. Uh, in sixth position. So 931 Q, MF, MMF, Rab Dance 971, and uh, the K Korea McCarn sixth. Let's have a look at some of the classes. I mentioned we've got a good GT4 class, Century, BMW, Charlie Robinson's just done his stint. The 429 leads from GPM by Dragon, Mercedes, AMG, then the first of the Toyotas. That's the Gazoo Racing UK car that's moved up then in that session. Continental Racing's car has swapped places, so he's gone down, they've gone up. Uh, Continental in fourth, 
uh, as I said. And then uh, Fabian Diffio for AGMC Racing Team by Simpson Motorsport in fourth. In TCE, we've not talked about the touring and other car classes so much yet. So CWS Mark Griffiths in the T78 Genetta G55 is quickest from the Audi RS2 LMS TCR uh, on a 2089 uh, and they're in second in that combined class. Um, AC Motorsport, we've seen them with Audis for a very, very long time. CWS have the second of their Ginetta G55s, uh, making up the top three. And I think that's all of our classes, isn't it? Yes, it is. The Lamara, by the way, the Lamara, by the way, is also in TCE. Um, those uh, cars. In the Creventic way of things, Phil, what you're looking at, I know that they don't look like a touring car <laughs> or a TCR car, but what we're talking about is is similar performance here so that you are getting a race within that division, within that category. Most definitely. It's, it's the, the balance of performance that, um, that Creventic come up with with all the categories, especially Ron, with those I other categories, um, the, the, the smaller Paul categories Cynic, where Charlie we're trying Robertson to build back up Paul. again, where we used to have a lot of cars, um, allowing more cars into those categories with similar performance and adding balance of performance due, um, with fuel load and fuel flow um, is... A, much more advantageous than asking people to spend lots of money modifying their cars to fit into a certain box. Joe Bradley down in the pit lane. So um, I'm at Century Motorsport, but I want to concentrate this time on their GT4 entry. It's the number 429 BMW. And Charlie Robertson here. Charlie, you've just qualified your car. Um, that's um, newly engaged Charlie Robertson, I've been told. Congratulations, <laughs> Charlie. So I'm sure you weren't thinking about that when you were qualifying the car, though. Uh, no, you well, got. Maybe you were. I maybe, don't know. Yeah. No, it was. Uh, of course you were. <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah, Kelly, I was. <laughs> um, yeah, it was uh, really good, actually. Good qualifying session. Um, Ravi had a great lap in his stint. I jumped in with his old tyres and just see what I could do. We've been slowly building the pace throughout the weekend, and um, it's his first time on the circuit, my second time here, so it's. Uh, it's, it's really good in the car. It's our second weekend in the car, so um, it's all shaping up really nicely for hopefully a really good 2024. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful tomorrow, if, if Ravi can go and do a good job in the last session, that we can have a clean race and uh, hopefully come away with a trophy of some sort. And only two of you in the car. I personally think that's more of an advantage over a six hour endurance race. Yeah, I mean, sorry, I just didn't hear you there. Yeah, only two of you sharing the car, which I think is more of an advantage over the six hours. Yeah, it, it should be, and Ravi's been really quick, and his pace has been really good. So we've got to do three hours each, though, so that's the big thing. So double double stint, so it's going to be difficult, midday heat, so we'll see what pops out. It's more about just having a, a clean run. You know what it's like, the less time you spend in the pits, the better, and everything's got to be slick, driver changes, pit stops, everything. So um, strategy will play a part as well. Now, the GT4 car, I've, I've, I mean, I've seen you drive everything from LMP, prototype downforce cars the gt4 car a little bit different in that respect charlie give us a good idea of, of say the differences between the gt4 i think it suits the way i like to drive which is quite loose coming from janetta juniors uh, where a lot of kids learn their craft in, in racing nowadays you know they're on road tires the rear steps out you know they're comfortable controlling it so this is quite similar there's not much downforce so you're relying on your car control to get the lap time out and i think that's why as well Ravi comes into this with such good stead because he's jumped straight from Ginetta GT Academy with the road tyres and he's used to moving around as well. So naturally, especially as tyres get older, we're, we're quite comfortable with the moving around. Uh, so the car suits both of our driving styles. So hopefully if we can have a clean one, we should, we should be in a good place come, come the end of Sunday. Great stuff. Thanks, Charlie. Cheers. Newly engaged Charlie Robinson, uh, but shortest engagement on record, uh, <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> He wasn't thinking about her, apparently. Dear, dear, does, oh, wow. does he learn? Has he learned both things? <laughs> uh, congratulations to Charlie and Kelly, and uh, wish them all the very best. Uh, darkness has descended uh, rather <laughs> rather rapidly. Uh, uh, to, the the to switch has got... Yeah, somebody turn the switch off. Right, now it gets really, really... Uh, Really, really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Really, really competitive. And <laughs> yes. it starts to count this for something. I only talk for a living, you know, um, so don't worry about that. At RSL underscore studio. Thank you very much for those of you all tuned in 
around the world. Uh, this track is spectacular at the best of times, but as the light fades and the cars polished within an inch of their life mm. begin to take on an, an almost virtual reality look with the way the multiple lights are causing shadows and uh, are, are all over the uh, all over the liveries of the cars coming around the hairpin uh, excuse me uh, turn six and seven there for cp racing it's actually <laughs> When you see this track uh, and, and you watch the coverage here, it's actually quite difficult to understand how compact it is, Phil, because it actually doesn't take up a big footprint. It's very clever how it falls back on itself. And in fact, there are places where if you are starting between, in fact, we, we, when we drove in this morning, I was thinking to myself, I'd forgotten just how close that side of the track is to the final corner yes. and how close we are to the catch fencing as we're driving. Yep, it, it, it is. It, um, the um, elongation of camera shots tends to uh, expand it rather than, if you're walking around it, and I've raced around this circuit uh, many times back when I had hair and a waist, um, it, uh, they, you know, it, um, and that was on the old 21 turn configuration. It doesn't feel that roomy when you're out there. I bet. It doesn't feel that roomy it's at quick, all. It's quick, isn't it, It's there? quick. And especially when you're coming down to the, the, the chicane on the end of the back straight, and you look, you tr if you miss that, you're going under a grandstand. <laughs> you know, and uh, we've seen bad accidents down well, there. Well, one of the four GTs went straight on with... Uh, uh, what's her name? It was Rafael yeah. Rahel Freyer, wasn't it? Yes. And uh, the, the, the problem was, I was racing my Clio here that way weekend. We were out the next morning because we couldn't qualify that night because the Barry had completely gone and taken out the TV cameraman. All I saw was a pair of black marks that disappeared under the fence. Now, she broke a femur and uh, it, was, it was a nasty accident. But boy, it's quick. You approach that so fast. That was... Uh... That was uh, Robert Greenlight, who was on that camera. Yes, he got his nose broke. That was the... Uh, <laughs> with, with, the, with, with, the <laughs> with the viewfinder. Yes, World GT1 Championship. Look at everybody sliding around That's out there. Great. The GT4s are sliding around everywhere. So great take a look stuff. at people who are improving. Uh, Brendan Leach for the Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo number 710. Third in GTX, just put in a 156.0. And that's keeping them in third position in GTX at the moment. Uh, Marcus Winkelhock. Now, there's a name we haven't yes. mentioned for a while. Marcus in an Audi R8 for Gorian RT by Car Collection. And he's just in one of 154.4. Um, that's that's an F4 lap record <laughs> time. <laughs> yes. um, let's, let's just get that in. Um, and there, we have seen GT3 cars go even quicker. Than that. So Marcus has just improved then to fifth in GT3. Baron Motorsport have plugged in Axel Jeffries for the final there stint in go. the 488. Ultimate plug and play accessory. He's just in a 53 7 and they're on top of the pile at the moment. So it's Baron Haas. No, Baron Grove. Ooh. Haas. No, Haas back again. <laughs> See, this is, I told you, this is when it's all going to happen. Baron from Haas, from Grove Racing. That's Ferrari, from Audi, from Mercedes, from BMW. In the hands of Jack Barlow for Century Race Labs, McLaren. Then the Porsche of Manamari. That is six different manufacturers in the top six. And on average, they are separated at the moment by just on a second. On average of three different drivers laps what I'm seeing John the track has cooled down by seven degrees since we started because the Sun has gone down yep. these guys are on very worn tires now yeah we're seeing a lot of people struggle with grip the blue number 80 is that uh, of Marcus Winkelhock very distinctive uh, livery on that car now halfway through this session and still we're seeing people either cleaning tyres or warming them up. See, you do have to slightly go offline sometimes when you're coming in or out of the pit lane. So these again, as Phil's making the point, it is all about managing these tyres and they are now potentially getting on for 40 to 45 minutes of qualifying running old. Um, and 
even if that's only three or four laps per driver, you're looking at this probably the sharp end of 15 to 20 laps, which have been quite robust. Yes. Axel Jeffries in the 86 Baron Motorsport Fastest Ferrari. Fastest lap, 53.715. So they've timed it perfectly. Yes, they have. In terms of getting some performance, leaving some performance for Axel in that car. And, and he's just been gazumped. Wow, Machuta Trey oh, wow. with a 54.1. Not as quick overall in this session, but but the average is three tenths better for Haas than it is for Barron. Audi, Ferrari, two Porsches now, with Dennis Marshall having a second go, so they must only be running two drivers. Then Herbert Motorsport, Alfred Radar in that car, Jordan Love for Grove, Centuries Jack Barlow, so it's Audi, Ferrari, Porsche, Porsche, Mercedes, BMW in the top six. Axel Jeffries needs to find three tenths of a second. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, the problem with that is four tenths of a second quicker already than anybody else it, in this there's session. There's not much more there. I'm there's, not, I'm there, not yeah. sure there is, Phil. There's not much more there. I had, well, looking at his lap, he was right on the very limit of everything. Pass RT with the multicoloured Audi. What a uh, what an impact in the best way they've made in this championship from the Caribbean Islands, very proudly put together. And I think it's fair to say they have made a splash, pun intended. <laughs> they race with smiles on their faces. And they're very, very competitive in every sense of that word. Just on five minutes to go, live from Yas Island and the Yas Marina circuit, just outside the capital city of Abu Dhabi. I suppose you'd say the capital of the United Arab well, Emirates is, as well. Well, it is the capital yeah. of the United Arab Emirates. It's where the ruling family live. Seven Emirates that came together over a period of time in the early 1970s, 1971, 72. Uh, Ras Al Khaimah was the last to join and make it the seven. It was a long camel trip up there, John. A long trip on a camel to get to Ras Al Khaimah. It's, I mean, it, it's worked, hasn't it? Let's yes. be honest. This region in that time look at the changes here in that time and it's even fair. even if you just look at our sport yes indeed great we have only had track-based motorsport here since 2004 late 2004 with dubai autodrome extraordinary that's isn't it? that's, that's two 20 decades. years yeah two, two decades, decades. Yeah. now we have this <laughs> and you know this region spread out spread your wings a little bit more um in terms of density of grade one circuits, probably no, absolutely <laughs> has to be the the most in the world. Down to the last three and a half minutes. Let's see who's improving. Look at the classes as well. Top 15 are GT3 cars. No, check that. Because the Vortex has oh. pitted. Oli Gomez has said, right, that's enough. We're on GTX pool. We've got an average of a 157.2. But there's still people making times up here. Life at Motorsport, Brendan Leach in the Lamborghini, number 710, has just done a 55.8. That's the fastest GTX in this session, but it's only good enough for third at the moment. Needs to find, again, about half a second to get onto the front row in GTX. In 992, Red Camel have gone to the top. Luke Breuters with a 58.1. And... They've got a three-lap average of 158.8. Uh, they are ahead of who's second? Rabdan in the pits now. Christopher Zirkling has just finished that. Then QMMF, so a couple of local teams there. MDM Irekanu, Tom Coronel back in that car. K. Kramer Racing. Seb Lajeux Racing by Duo in sixth. That's going to be a crack of battle in the 992 oh, class. 992 is going to be awesome this weekend. A great field of cars. Last two minutes now, Phil. Who's got the performance left? It's still Hassart T. Mathieu Dutre stayed out there. His best lap is a 54.08. That was his last lap. So he's still finding some performance out there. 154.317. But now, Luke Hartog. 
for car collection in their Porsche. That's another change of manufacturer. They are only a tenth away. A 53 9 and 9 5 from Luke last time. 153, uh, 154.3 is the average for the pool. 154.4. <laughs> How tight is that? And then 154.6 for Baron Motorsport and Axel Jeffries. I don't think Axel is going to close in because he has a. He's already got a much quicker time than those guys, but it's the average that's working against him. But can Luke Hartog, he only find, needs to find nine tenths of a second only, says Eindhoff, standing in the booth. I think that was his lap. They've, um, I saw that middle sector. It was a purple middle sector. Um, uh, Axel Jeffries was a tenth of his best time, a 154.7 um, average. So uh, he just couldn't make that where the other two guys, and have a look at this, sector three. Um, Alfred Renau has just put in the fastest sector three time oh. at Herbert's brother. Is he going? Is it this it? Is, it, is, is he well, going to throw it? A, a tenth will move him to the other side of the grid and give him a position. If he can find two and a half tenths, it could put him on the front row. Yes, exactly. E.B. Mortis in the pit lane with the multicoloured Porsche. Who's that coming in behind as well? That is the tricolour coloured car in ninth position. The Huber Motorsport Mark car, Bartels. I think. Yeah, Mark Bartels. A yellow flag out at turn 12. So that's going to stop anybody who's who on a quick one. Is, yeah, not through that area. <laughs> But across the line, another lap for all these cars that come through now. Have they still got anything left? Through goes the red. The very fetching uh, red and white number 96 Porsche, which uh, at the moment is oh. sitting, yeah, rather a uh, second place. That's the car collection car. That's Luke. We just Luke had the Audi had a, uh, a half spin. I couldn't pick up the number of it. There was an Audi just uh, rotated around and uh, we just picked it up with the cameras just going, uh, heading back in the right direction, albeit reasonably uh, slower. Uh, GT3 Audi or a, yeah, a two? Yeah, it was a, okay. yeah, it was a, uh, definitely a GT3 Audi. Uh, was that Marcus before he pitted? Mark, I think, on the blue one? Not sure, just having a look at that. So this this yellow flag. I think that was our yellow flag at 10-12. Yeah. yeah. So time has elapsed. The track is clear, so anyone who is running round towards that turn 12 area now can improve. Big flash of the lights from Luke Hartog. I think he's still on it in that car collection car. There's no point in saving any of the... Quicker sector one, personally. Well, there's no point in saving performance now no. <laughs> on the Hankooks because he uh, is... First of all, he is... Uh, in traffic and he's gonna have to use it and this is probably his last lap axel jeffries has crossed the line 153 467 wow. wow he pulled it out but i don't think it's going to be enough he got with it a tenth and a <laughs> half of the front row i didn't think he could find anything else there and jordan love in the number 10 car 153 233 what that is in the grove racing Mercedes AMG GT3. Is this Paul position then for Luke Hartog? He needs to find under a tenth of a second. It is! He's gone through with a 53 7. Oh, and that oh, gives wow. him Paul by, wait for this, on average. Right, that's his fastest lap is a 53 7. That gives the three lap average of what? Let's call it 10 miles, isn't yeah. it? Because it's three yes. point, nearly three miles. 154-313. Their PIP has RT on a 154-317. Four one thousandths of a second. Four milliseconds. Wow. Between first and second. <laughs> and then a huge gap, by the way. Uh, a tenth and a half back <laughs> on average again to Axel Jeffries in third. So it's Porsche and Audi on the front row from Ferrari and Porsche in the shape of Baron Motorsport with the 86 car and Herbert Motorsport, obviously, with the number 91. Then on the third row, subject to post-qualifying tech, Grove Motorsport and Century Motorsport for AMG and BMW. Race Labs McLaren, a very creditable seventh position on the inside of Road 4, Road 4 from Manamari Energy by EB Motors and their Porsche. They pulled the car in a little bit earlier on, felt they'd done enough. Then it's Huber and CP Racing, in fifth position how about that we said the action would come at the end <laughs> it has and under 
a beautiful sunset tonight looking out towards the the west and uh, over towards Yas Beach in the golf course and beyond that is a stunning final lap I wasn't sure when he was going through but as soon as I saw him hit the lights and the flash button there Phil he clearly look Hartog oh, yeah. clearly felt there was something left in that car. He'd saved those tyres right to the very end. I think uh, good management, uh, fantastic management from from uh, the uh, car collection team, just making that work on that last lap. And we had a lot of cars with a lot of green and purples happening in that GT category on that last lap as well. It was a Q lap. I'll give you some port positions for the other categories. It's the Vortex V8 of uh, oh. Olivia Gomez who did the job uh, for their team 14th overall and that Vortex number 701 will be on pole for GTX ahead of Lamborghinis, a couple of Lamborghinis from Scott Sport and Leipert. Then on 992 pole, it's the Breukers family outing uh, with Red Camel Jordans and L. That is the 909 ahead of Rabdan and QMMF, the two local 992 Cup teams. And if we go down to uh, GT4 Century Motorsport nicking it late on in the BMW M4 with a 429 ahead of an AMG. That's the GPM by Dragon Racing, Ramses Azam uh, doing the final stint there in the 408. And then the two Toyota GR Supras, the uh, UK uh, won first ahead of the Continental Racing. And finally, in the GTE division, last but not least, CWS take first and second. Colin White pulling out the stops in the 278, ably backed up by Owen Hizzy, who did the last stint in the 277, ahead of the first of the true touring cars, AC Motorsports Audi, Simpson Motorsports Audi, uh, and racetrack competitions, Lamara Cup car. Let's uh, say thank you to Phil Anson. He'll be back with us tomorrow, and we'll head down to the pit lane and Nick Damon and Joe Bradley down there. I think it's Nick who's waiting for the Paul sitting car to come back into the pit lane. Luke Hartog, what a, what a lap that was, Nick. Yeah, fantastic stuff. And he's even tricked us by deciding to go to scrutineering rather than back to his pit. So luckily, it's a much shorter pit lane, as we said, because we only have half a pit, but it still involved me meandering at some sort of speed to Are get to Are you sashing, uh... Mr. Damon? Oh, actually, I've just bumped into it. My gosh, Luke's quite tall. <laughs> Luke, um, congratulations, a fantastic lap you pulled out at the end there. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, my teammate made it very hard to beat, so I was basically fighting him on the Delta, which was nice. I mean, uh, also a great performance by our uh, gentleman, Dustin, really good job. I mean, first GT3 qualifying for me and to put it on pole, but it, I mean, it was a team effort. I, I had a small part in it, but it's a nice feeling. They were saying on the commentary that once the sun went down, the, the grip had gone. Did you, do you think there was a lot less grip than you had when you went out for practice earlier today? A little bit. We mostly focused in the testing on the on the long run pace, so we didn't really had any expectations going into qualifying. Uh, personally, I didn't feel much of a difference. For me, it was more important uh, to get a good gap. I mean, with 46 cars on the track, it's quite uh, quite difficult to manage in a GT3 car because on the straights you're quite slow. But um, yeah, as soon as I had a gap, I managed to get a good lap, last lap. Yeah. Now, in most preventing events, which are 12 hours or 24 hours, we say well, our pole's not that important. But in a six-hour race, of course, it is more important at the front, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, uh, I think strategy is yeah, much more important. Also, if it's going to be a long or a short race with uh, interventions, I mean, it's the best position to start off. Like if you ask me where I want to start at 24, it's always on the first row. So, uh, no, I'm happy. Great stuff. Thanks, Luke. Thank you. So a brilliant piece of timing, a brilliant piece of driving. Uh, talk about this whole uh, system of qualifying that people seem to think is overly uh, complicated. I don't. I think it reflects the fact that more than one driver and, in fact, the whole team has to play a part exactly as they do uh, in uh, in the race itself over six hours. What a brilliant qualifying session. And it all heated up towards the end. Here's the best of it.
brilliant stuff then from all the teams in qualifying in the evening light with the beautiful orange sky over Yas Marina circuit. As far as we're concerned uh, for action from the Hancock six hours, uh, we'll talk to you on Sunday morning, 10 o'clock local time. Uh, that's a, a little uh, a little early for you if you're back uh, in the UK. That's 6 a.m. But worth getting up for, Nick Damon with his infamous, I was going to say famous, but I think infamous grid walk. And then we'll have the whole six hours without interruption for you. Uh, still action coming from the other series here at Yas Marina on various different channels around the world. But for Phil Anson, for Nick Damon and Joe Bradley and all of our Nils Weisfei 1 team, both here at the track and back in Cologne. It's a very good evening from Yas Marina. And tomorrow we race for round two of the Middle East Trophy. See you then. Bye bye.